Hi people, welcome back. My name is Ran. I share content about electric vehicle. In today's video, I mainly want to talk about the comparison and differences between battery swapping technology and ultra-fast charging. I've seen comments from people saying that new battery swapping technology is useless because right now they are technology that can support to charge the battery from 10% to 80% in about 10, 12, 15 minutes. That is correct, theoretically speaking. We did see many media or car manufacturers or even battery companies doing these kind of tests, proving that they can charge the battery at that speed. But they didn't really tell you the preconditions to accomplish that. First of all, I'd say that you probably need this 800 volt built electric vehicle. Most of the electric vehicles you can find right now in the market are 400 volt built mostly. And with this 400 volt built electric vehicle, you can probably get a maximum output of 250 kilowatt from the chargers. And if you're lucky enough, you can probably get uh, sustain that kind of output in about 200 kilowatt if you're lucky enough, which is very good already. But there's a still a very long way from charging the battery from 10% to 80% in just about 10 minutes. And not mentioning that these 800 volt built electric vehicle, most of them are quite expensive. And you don't really have that much option like the 400 volt built electric vehicle, at least to date, 2024. Okay, let's say if you do have, if you do possess an 800 volt electric vehicle right now, that the end vehicle, the terminal can support that kind of ultra-fast charging. But to charge your electric vehicle, you'll be needing enough ultra-fast chargers around where you live or work. And that is reasonable, right? Based on my observation that I've visited quite a lot of places for the past few years, and I doubt that there will be sufficient ultra-fast chargers anywhere in this world. We're not talking about the ordinary, very random DC fast charging. We're talking about ultra-fast charging, like the many media and car manufacturers being promoting right now, saying that they can charge a battery from 10% to 80% in 10 minutes. With that kind of speed, you're probably going to need, a, let's say you have a battery between 80 to 100 kilowatt in your car, then you're going to probably need an output at least roughly, let's say, 400 kilowatt from the charger. 400 kilowatt. There are car manufacturers claimed that they can build these auto fire chargers for their customers. For instance, like Xpeng, Zika, Lotus, Porsche, Mercedes, and Li Auto. All these chargers can support that kind of speed of charging battery from 10% to 80% in 10 minutes, roughly. But the thing is, you rarely see them in practical life. You rarely see them put these kind of chargers into mass production. It almost feels like a marketing gimmick that attracts you to purchase their vehicle, purchase the product. But they don't build enough. They don't build enough these kind of ultra fast chargers. I'm also wondering that these kind of ultra fast chargers from these manufacturers, are they going to build these exclusive for their own customers? or are they going to open for everyone? It's supposed to be open for everyone, right? Well, let's say if they are open for everyone, as a manufacturer, from perspective of a manufacturer, why would I bother to invest so much money to build these kind of ultra fast chargers? Because they are very expensive. As my customer, you can just purchase my vehicle, purchase my product, and you can just find anywhere in the market to whatever the charger station can find, just plug in and charge. And that is actually the fact that most electric vehicle users in the market they're not using the charger from the car brand. Most of the time, they were using the charger from the third parties that they can find easily in the market. The third point that I want to say is that to accomplish this kind of ultra fast speed of charging a battery from 10% to 80% about 10 minutes, you will need to make sure that the SOC of the battery is as low as possible. To put it very simple, the remaining power in your battery has to be low enough, otherwise you can't get that kind of super speed. You heard the marketing saying that it's 10% to 80%. You never heard them saying 60% to 100%, right? There are literally physical limits with the lithium and chemicals inside of the battery. If the SOC is over 6%, you have no chance to get that kind of fast speed. Fourth, to accomplish these kind of ultra fast speed, uh, to charge a battery from 10% to 80% in about 10 minutes in an ultra fast charger station, you have to make sure that nobody is sharing the power output with you. Because this kind of ultra-fast charging power output, as a general idea, cover the whole station with many chargers all together, not a single individual handle on your hands. So if there are many people using the charger same as you do at the same time, you won't get that kind of power output. You won't get that kind of speed because the general output would have been evened and would have been shared and evened. I don't really believe they can find this perfect condition that you're the only person using the charger from the charger station in your daily life possibly in some places in Northern Europe, where it's less populated and the infrastructure is good enough. But overall speaking, I would believe that it's just something too ideal. The fifth, also the last one I want to tell you that if you are fine with the battery getting auto-fast charging frequently, 
and obtaining this uh, inevitable loss or hazard for longer term. Why? The ultra-fast charger always comes with a uh, very high voltage and very high current, especially this very high current that will generate a huge amount of heat. And if this heat cannot be dissipated in time, it will intensify the chemical reactions and lead to a reduction of usable uh, lithium ions and result in an irreversible hazard to the battery. So the heat management is crucial. And many car manufacturers claim that they have this BMS, which is called battery management system. But how good are they? That really depends on the feedback of the actual electric vehicle users. If you're interested, you can find this uh, very first bunch of electric vehicle users who bought their vehicle in 2017, 18, or 19. And there have been constantly uh, many uh, discussions on the internet regarding batteries. I'm not going to extend that topic. If you're interested, you can dig in by yourself. Okay, so these are the five preconditions that I concluded regarding accomplishing the ultra fast charging for your battery from 10% to 80% in about 10 minutes. And I do hope it's helpful for you to have a better understanding of the technology or the gimmick. And let's be realistic, it is not as good as a portrait, at least for now. Let's move to the second section of today's video, which is about the benefits of battery swapping technology. But before everything, I wish to talk to you about some fundamentals about this battery swapping technology, especially for newcomers that always got confused about this concept. First of all, in a power swapping system, what do you purchase is not really a unique individual battery with a serial number. What do you purchase or what do you possess is actually a subscription or service that allows you to utilize all the batteries from the power stations, namely the battery pool. Many people, when they purchase the electric vehicle, let's say from Neo, they sometimes have this illusion and believe that the battery inside of this vehicle is one of the properties. They think that they own the battery, but in fact, it's not. What they own is actually a subscription or service that allows them to use all the batteries with this standard pack from all the power stations. And that's the reason sometimes when some people purchase an electric vehicle from Neo, they sometimes dare not to swap the battery that fast because they were thinking that they are exchanging the very new battery from the vehicle for some very old battery from the power stations. That is an incorrect thought. They get stuck with this, didn't really understand the concept. But when they comprehend the concept, they are entering a new world. The second point I wish to tell you is that the, the battery swapping technology is, battery swapping is one of the methods to supply power to an electric vehicle, just like the chargers. So these two ways of supplying electricity are complements of each other instead of rivals. It's not really that you swap the battery for your vehicle, then you cannot charge. You can charge as well. You can charge the battery, charge your vehicle whenever and wherever you want. So battery swapping offers another alternative of power supplying, not like rival connections as many media portrayed. Those two, from the perspective of a real electric vehicle user, you want more options for power supplying. So you can swap, either swap or you can charge. Maybe in the future you have another option of wireless charging, who knows? So more options of power supply will be preferable from the perspective of electric vehicle user. Okay, now let's start with the benefits of battery swapping. Let's look at the benefits for customers first, as most people will be caring about their own profits in the first place. The swapping technology is better for customers because it transfers the risk of battery, which is the most vulnerable and expensive part of an electric vehicle, from the end user to car manufacturers, meaning that you don't have to bother with the, to bear the risk of any potential damage in your battery. The car manufacturer and the battery providers have this agreement to monitor, maintain, and upgrade all the batteries inside of the station altogether, and even resolve the damaged and unhealthy batteries. And that would be their business, and as a customer, you don't have to bother with the battery. You swap the battery and use it, just like fill the gas in your tank. It's not quite necessary to, to worry about the old or new battery in these circumstances. Because all the batteries in the power station are under monitoring and inspection all the time, you just grab one and use it. So there's no need to worry about whether you get a new one or old one, because generally speaking, they are equal. The second thing that's going to be beneficial to the customer is that you can literally swap the battery to upgrade or downgrade. If you go for a longer journey, you can swap the battery to a larger pack, so that allows you to go for a longer range. So, and when you're going back home, you can swap it to downgrade to a smaller pack, um, so that will be more efficient and economic for daily commuting. And that being said, you can always enjoy the very best up-to-date battery in the future because the batteries are swappable. You can always enjoy the most freshly updated battery in any time in the future. The very good example to prove that is that the first bunch of the Neo ES8, 
the very first model of NEO, the ES8 user that purchased the vehicle in 2018 or 19, they can still use to swap the battery to the newest 150 kilowatt hour battery pack that NEO just launched in 2024. After so many years, they can still enjoy the newest battery because the battery are swappable. The standard hasn't changed at all. It is sustainable. Imagine in future that the battery technology has been developed significantly that allows you to go for any type of battery pack, allows you to go for a journey of 2000 kilometers range. You don't have to purchase an extra vehicle to do that. You can just use the vehicle that you purchased today to swap to upgrade that kind of battery pack for a long, for a short term usage if needed. You don't have to spend extra money to purchase that a new vehicle for that kind of long range. The third thing I would say is that the battery swapping technology is beneficial or it's friendly to the health of the battery because all the batteries stored in the power station are under, let's say, a relatively speaking, slow charging condition. The monitoring and inspection for the battery are constantly happening when the battery are stored in the power station. Each time when a customer go for a battery swapping, there will be a real-time tracking of the battery health as well. There will be a large number of models are used to perform this analyze for the battery health and personalized algorithms and strategies are used to maintain and extend battery life. Neil claimed that with the current management technology, they can guarantee that the battery life can be still over 80% after 15 years of usage. The fourth point I wish to talk about that the power station is really friendly to the grid system. Whether you have the electric vehicle swapping the battery in the power station or not, the power station as an individual facility is being connected and interacted with the grid system all the time and stably. They are actually involved in a power adjustment with the grid system. Many people don't really have the idea of how much influence that the fast charges could bring to the instability of the local grid system. To put it in a very simple way, if there are so many cars being using the charging station for the fast charging simultaneously, that will generate a huge amount of power output at a peak time. That will generate a, this very instability of the power station that could lead to a breakdown to the whole power grid system. So the battery swapping station as a power station can be involved and interacted with the grid system to adjust this output and make the output even. A very easy example to realize that is that, for instance, um, the power st we're talking about over 20 batteries in the power station. So the power station can utilize the electricity during nighttime to charge all the batteries in the power station fully. And during daytime, they can export this kind of electricity stored in the batteries at night reversely during daytime. And this will ease the burden of the grid system. That will make the grid system co-working with the power stations that dotted and distributors all around the city, forming a, let's say, a system like a little reservoir, a power reserve reservoir. And there's another hint for you that the, starting from the third generation of power station from NEO, that there will be more charger stations accompanied with the power swapping station. So let's say during daytime, all the charger stations of NEO has been plugged with many electric vehicle users. The power stations actually can give an extra boost to that kind of output to the chargers. Why? Because the charger station is being connected most of the time with the grid system, but the power station is always connected with the grid system. So when during daytime, when the grid system can't um, give enough output to the chargers, the power swapping station can give an extra boost to the chargers, making the charging speed actually faster. The very initial idea of starting the battery swapping technology is to give the electric vehicle user the same, a similar experience of fill the gas tank in a gas station. But it turns out that right now it demonstrated that the progress could be even better because everything gets automatic right now. It's more intelligently designed. Right now, the experience of swapping battery is not really just about three, four, five minutes, very short time, just like the filling the gas in the gas station. That now the progress is very automatic. You don't really have to get off the car to do the swap. Um, it's getting very automatic. You don't have to do any manual human intervene in the process of swapping accompanied with a very developing autopiloting functionality. What I'm trying to say is that people find more in the process of developing battery swapping technology, people find more benefits instead of just you know, replacing a similar experience uh, in terms of gas fitting in a gas station. Everything will become more exciting and make a huge difference. Right now, there are more other car manufacturers and energy companies joining in, in this swapping alliance together with NEO. So not in, sh in the very near future, we're looking forward to have this first swappable electric vehicle from the auto manufacturer.
there are many things, many details that I want to share to you uh, from the perspective of a real new electric vehicle user. But I would say that these four points are the very important main benefits that I concluded about battery swapping technology. I hope you're enjoying today's content. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.